what happens if you hook these up wrong? Uh, or if they touch each other or something that's hooked up on something funny. Uh, Toyota, it's not super expensive, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. It's not like a fuse that you can change out real easy. You gotta take the whole fuse box apart and push it through and all that stuff. That's what this video is about. I'm gonna teach you how to get a Toyota to work again after doing that. In this case, it was left on way too long. There's four things that you have to do, and I'm gonna teach you. Uh, dome light fuse, uh, EFI or electronic fuel injection fuse, and alternator fuse, the 80 amp black one. That one you have to unscrew screws from down inside the fuse block. So I'm going to teach you how to take that apart and unlatch it. You got two bolts, a clip, rotate it over, and then two clips and then get the back off, and then one more clip and shove it through the bottom. And then you've got an eight millimeter screw and a 10 millimeter screw. And after you watch this video, you're gonna know exactly what to do. Brian's Mobile One. 94 Toyota 4Runner. Beautiful little rig. We've seen this on the channel with all the transmission clutch and head gasket videos. Uh, this one now is, it got a new battery and it's also getting a new main relay. Main relay, it's 80 amps. It's black like this one. We ripped it off. They're screwed in from underneath, and this section here comes out the bottom. But if you get into a pinch to where it's also called the alternator relay. So anyway, you hook up a battery backwards, pops that, and in this case, it popped the battery. We got the new battery under warranty, and we're gonna get this done. First thing I do, get the battery out. And then we're going to pull this box up. Uh, the reason being, you see it unbuckles right here. This has to go down through here by pulling on this tab in order to get the bolts out of either side of it to get that replaced. This is what your relay is going to look like. It's going to say 80 amp on top and you'll have a wire in the middle. These are the newer looking ones and it's got the split in the middle. If you're in the boonies and you got a MacGyverit and the middle part's blown out, so it used to look like that. You can take the tabs and wrap them this way or wrap them in a gum wrapper, a foil wrapper, and that'll get you where you need to be. And then you can get the right stuff. This part, I like to use a dental pick. You can either use a hooked one straightened or a hooked or a plain. You've got a whole bunch of tabs to undo. 10 millimeter. Right here. Drop. good idea to have a little pencil magnet handy or secure your bolts to the socket coming up because they can get in no man's land you just grab it by the washer like this It'll save you all kinds of grief ting to the magnet tray got another one on this side I haven't done one of these for years I used to get a lot of these try not to horse stuff try to be gentle where you can but this is before computer-aided design was a big thing and afterthought engineering was the play of the day. Ting. There we go. So now you can better see this one and this one back here. So you got those pulled off. That's all one thing. I gotta get this guy next. Man, it's been a hot minute. So if this was a Chrysler, that would have broken. So that's undone. There's going to be something under here. Because why wouldn't there be? Here it is. It's on the front side. I'm just as surprised as you are. Like I say, I haven't seen one of these in a hot minute. No breaking, no snapping. You get these two done because the other ones that come up from this side, they don't want to go anywhere. They are happy where they are. All right, let's get a big fat screwdriver. Of course, we've got our battery out or disconnected before we do any of this. Actually, the whole bottom thing goes this way because the tabs switch sides. Trying to get this to bow this way a little bit. Got to be another thing. It's got to come out the rest of the way right here. That's why. There we go. Should get happy about now. Let's 
see these little hooks right here they really got a hinge in so order of operations the order of the day okay so this goes back to the right and it'll push right out there we go there's those fasteners that we've been looking for there's one right here and another on the other side we're all set for that these are hot hot wires 12 volts and lots of amps so make sure everything is disconnected first and son of a gun I should have brought an impact and put this into low range go of course it's an eight millimeter on one side and ten on the other somehow I feel like I remember that and you should just have to loosen them if it's been done before and you've got the one with the slot if not then you got to pull them all the way out and juggle wires and all the fun things that build character all right, let's get some needle nose pliers. If you were to dremel a little cutout in this corner, you'd get corrosion in there when you hit splashes because there's not good uh, shielding from that. Yeah, we got to come all the way out. This has not been replaced before. But like I say, the water will shoot right up the back of this and it'll rust out and it'll break down on the side of the road somewhere. Nobody got time for that. All right, we're gonna stash a screw here. So I should be able to pull half that out since it's a separated circuit. See, it's just a flat bladed one. There's no cut out. I used to take uh, side cuts and just cut them so they'd be able to slip in and out. All right, let's make a little comparison for depth, reach, all that stuff looks good. This uh, part number is Papa Alpha Lima 180 Bravo Papa. You should expect to spend a seam as low as $3 and some odd cents if you buy a bunch of them, um, all the way up to $16 each. So I usually look at however these are. So I'm going to have this one go in this way so they read the same way. So I'll just lay that down for a minute. We'll grab the other half, half of this uh, little savior, Jesus weak link in the system to uh, make sure our car doesn't burn down. It saved us on this one. That could have melted all kinds of important wires and things had it not been there. All right, so we take this one, slide it in there. We'll start with our eight millimeter on this side. Just want to make sure you wiggle this up and down a little bit. Make sure that it goes through the hole. Do Phillips or a wrench. If you don't use a... And be careful with these. The other thing you could do if you're in a real pinch is on the receiving leg, you could have it bridge across and team up on this, but it would probably likely blow. You see how these are almost touching? You don't want them touching or else it won't protect properly but it can get you out of a pinch. So do with that what you will at your own risk. I'm just gonna pile that right on top of the other one since they're already in contact. You can get that good, all kinds of German good day, good and tight. Oh, munch, munch. Get these to lay up on top of each other like they know they should. Get that to lay in there. Make sure everybody's no touching. Keep your hands and your fronds to yourself. Here's our low range 10 millimeter. Make sure this thing is got great contact. A good electrician doesn't break stuff, but he gets it awfully close so that it's tight. Okay, well there we are. I'm gonna get in close for some thumbnails. There we go. And then we'll get to the other side, also in the center of the frame.
All right, now the fun part. I'm gonna put this back together, and it really is a lot more fun going together than coming apart, because everything is designed to be assembled. Six Sigma efficiency style. So coming apart, not so fun. Going together is a snap. Toyota came up with an efficiency campaign called Six Sigma, wherein they have high efficiency. Having recalls like American cars do so much, or even Japanese cars made in America, is not efficient at all. It's not cheap. So they try to catch all their mistakes at the factory. And uh, the Six Sigma. Sigma is just like this standard deviations from the mean or a bell curve. You got the high part in the middle is the mean. So you got so many deviations of the bell curve on each side. So they want to be within Six Sigma of being perfect. It's a st statistical term. And that's about all I remember of it. And hopefully I sounded smart because that's all I got. <laughs> get that in studying business classes. All right, how can I get this to go up higher on this side? I have to disconnect this guy. And you don't want to flex it on up in there. It don't go nice. But it do go. So you got to use a screwdriver because this goes one way. And then you got to get it to come back the other way. It's like that uh, country song, go away, wait a minute, I want out, but I want in it. It wants to go one way to get on there, but wants to go the other way. I'm trying to be gentle with these wires. Okay, so my clip on that would be in place, but it's all the way up inside of there. So I have to come all the way back down until it clears where I had the screwdriver in it before I can pull it back out again. There it is. Hello, I gotta get my clip out of there. I gotta gently nurse it right there. That's the whole magic right there. And we're all clipped in. See, easy peasy. That was not easy or peasy, whatever peasy implies. But this cable I think was also fighting me. So that's back in place. Clicks right in, throw in a couple bolts like nothing ever happened. All the wires are where they need to be. I don't know how they got this together in the first place, but I guarantee you all the wires were less stiff at that time. Or a robot did it, who knows? Probably not, it's probably some Hiroshi destined factory worker. So this wants me to loosen the bolt back here, just a bit, go back and tighten that in a minute, and just shift the whole thing clockwise and over, there we go, falls into place, now I'm going to use, pretend this is the bolt, I'm going like this on it to get it started, I want to sink that far as I can get it to go by hand without having my fingers hurt or some other back ache problem. And then get on it with all that side load torque. And line up my witness marks, get it where it wants to be. Tighten it down. Witness marks is just evidence of dirt missing from where the thing went on. That's all it is. All right, this thing's been broken. Somebody lost a little patience trying to get into that once upon a time. God bless them. You can see there's a hole right there. That's for the hook for the battery tie down. So we're going to be aiming right about even where this guy is. You go all the way down to the tray and it should fall right in on this line. So got that. Good. And then we've got a crossbar to the top and we've got this guy right here. So that's where we're going. 12 millimeters, the name of this game. Forgot to bring a socket or an impact. We got patrol right after this, and I'm halfway to the jail, so I didn't want to have to do both of these. Try to combine trips and be environmentally friendly. There we go. 
Everybody loves saving a buck at the pump. Everybody loves breathing clean air. This is how we do it. Has that Loctite by hydrochloric acid. Keeps this from vibrating off. It's kind of fortuitous, isn't it? Whoa. Fantastic. Fill the bar. Wonderful. Fantastico. <laughs> You're gonna go from here to one of the terminals, choose the negative one, go from here to the positive when this is connected, it's bad. So we do all this first so that we can go here, wouldn't matter, and go here, also doesn't matter. So we found that the dome lights didn't work, that was my test if everything was good to go. And this is the fuse for the dome light. If we look on here, it says Dome. So we had another dome fuse. That could have been before or after being jumped. This is what we're looking for for a dome fuse. It should look like a little loop that connects one side to the other side. That's all it does. Put that in. And it immediately sparks, which means there's a load to that circuit. So let's see if the dome light's on in the truck. That could be why the battery died if it sat for a while. So I don't see anything on. Open the door and the dome lights all come on. They go out, so that's good. I think we're good, but we need keys. I was not entrusted with keys. This is on on-site repair in the city an hour away. Let's go get some keys and then see if there's any other blue fuses or the like. It's funny that I went for the dome light to check. Here's another 15 amp fuse of another variety. You see, it's also blown. This one is responsible for electronic fuel injection. Would this start? Absolutely not. We need to do that. So we blew the main fuse, dome fuse, and the DCM or electronic fuel injection fuse. Let's see if I can find one of those in my spare kit. That's why it's good to have uh, Toyotas of a feather flock together. Because I've got lots of 15 amp fuses. i got them for emergency lights. I've got a little baggie of them. I have to remember to replenish, but I've got three. So perfect. Hmm. 15 amp. Make sure that the numbers all point the same way because it tickles. It's fun having things be right. That's why we're going to pull these two out and flip them around. This is where you're just wasting time at this point. But like I say, it tickles. It's so fun to have things be aimed to you, whether it's dollars in your wallet or fuses in your fuse box. All right, so we got the dome light fuse in, we got the fuel injection fuse in, and most importantly, the main fuse. We're gonna put the cover on for good luck and uh, fire it up. That's better. What do you think, John? Great. That feels good, huh? <laughs> Bonus footage at the end. I I got into paramotors for a little bit. My dad shut that down so fast. <laughs> well, if you get back into it, come out and fly with me, dude. Do you do that? Oh hell yeah.